Hi guys, Trick Tiger here. It's been a long time since I've done one of these for you, but with the new update today that allows us to add things directly to the fork character, I thought I'd do a quick tutorial for you. Now, there are a couple of different ways to achieve this, but uh, I'm going to do spawning the item into the world. Uh, I just prefer it that way. Um, so I've created a little prefabs folder and we just right click and we create an entity prefab definition. Uh, because the mesh I'm using is an Apple, I'm going to call it a PF for prefab and then Apple, but call it what you want. Um, and then open this up. And this is your prefab builder. Um, so this is the entity it's already created. And then you can just add a component. Uh, where's my mesh? Mesh component. And you can see my Apple is here. Uh, there's the Apple. Um, there are options you can set here, but for the moment, I'm quite happy with that. That's the apple I want to spawn. So we'll keep that there. Okay, we just save that. Actually, I'm just going to reopen this to show you something, because um, if when you try and uh, add a component, your mesh component, and it's not there, you just have to compile verse first. Um, it can only add things to your prefab that it can see in the Assets Digest. So just a quick little tip there. Um, so yeah, what was I doing? I was doing that and then we will compile verse um, just to get that this prefab that I've just made into the Assets Digest. OK, so next we need to write the component that's going to attach things uh, to the player. So if we open Verse Explorer and then we right click on your project, add new verse file to project and we're going to create a scene graph component and we will call this um, add component. Call it what you want. Uh, then just simply click create and this should uh, now create an add component for me. So we just open this up and this is just an empty um, scene graph component for you to work on. Okay the first thing we're going to do is we want something to trigger this so I'm just going to get rid of uh, the custom int that it puts in everyone and we'll have a trigger that I'm going to call trigger um, and it's not liking that because I haven't imported the devices sub module. Okay, so um, I've now got an editable trigger. I'm not going to cover the verse basics in this because uh, you kind of need verse to do this, but this is um, just to get this working. That's that was how you would add a trigger. Okay, while I'm at it, um, I might as well add the rest of the usings that I'm going to need. Uh, so I'm going to need uh, character. Uh, I'm going to need. Uh, the assets one so that we can access the prefab and I'm going to need spatial math so that I can set its um, transform. Okay, that should be all the includes I need. Okay, so um, the first thing to do that, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subscribe to this trigger so that uh, when it when something triggers it, that it, uh, it runs the function that we want to do. So it's a triggered event and we're going to subscribe and we're going to call it do stuff and then up here we're going to write a do stuff function now a trigger isn't always triggered by an agent so it's a maybe agent uh, an optional agent i always call them that okay what's the first thing we need to do with this then so we want to check if that thing that triggered it is um oh i've put i always do that i put my uh, option on the wrong side um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check is the agent real? What have I missed? Oh, I've missed my equals out. So is the agent real? And then uh, we want to get the port character because it's the force port character entity that we want to um, attach things to. Uh, and then we want the fork characters entity, so I'll call this for FC ent. Well, FC ent, and we'll do FC get entity. This returns the entity that is attached to our player's fork character. Uh, and then I'll also want the simulation entity because um, because that's the world entity. That's the thing that um, that we're going to add new things to. You should we should always be attaching it to the world. 
And then the last thing that I probably want to get here is um, the origin of my fork character. So this is how we're going to attach things to the fork character. We're going to get the origin and then we're going to set the new thing that we make to that origin. So uh, we'll call this new origin or FC origin just for naming convention sake um, is the entity origin. Uh, which I want to equal the entity origin and the entity is going to be FC ent because I want it to be my fork character entity. Oh, I keep forgetting the equal sign, sorry guys. Um, so if all those things are true then what do we want to happen? Then right we need to add the the apple or whatever thing you've added to your thing so i'm going to define that so my prefab is prefabs.pf apple and then uh, we want to add so cement is my simulation entity that i got above and we want to add the entities uh, that we've just created um when you add an entity uh, to anything but to the simulation entity it's an array that you have to pass because it's plural for some reason um so you just send the one thing within the array um and then to attach it to the player all we're going to do is we're going to get our prefab that we've just added and we're going to set its origin to fc origin so as easy as that the uh, prefab that we've just made is now going to follow the the character. However, the um, fork character's origin I think is on the ground, so I'm going to just set its transform up a bit higher so that it's on his head. Uh, so we're going to set the local transform, and that is going to be a type transform. And we want to just change the translation. We don't care about the others. Uh, translation is vector 3 and we're just going to change the up value uh, let's put it 100 up from where it is and that is probably all we need to uh, to attach something to the character so I'm gonna uh, just gonna build verse you spelled successfully and I'm going to throw a trigger device into the world, which is there. I'm going to turn VFX and SFX off, pet hate. Uh, and then I better just add an entity to the world. So you click on this box here, entities, entity. And then I'm going to add that component that I just made, add component in here and link up the trigger. You can either click there or you can drop eyedropper it and pick the trigger that way. Um, th that I believe is it. I'm going to launch a session and be back with you shortly. Okay guys, by the power of editing here we are. It's already here and uh, let's start the game and see what happens. So there's my trigger and I run onto the trigger and there's my apple following me perfectly smoothly. So no more uh, VFX devices needed to add things to the character. Um, no more hacky little workarounds with move to or anything. No jittery. It's just perfectly smooth. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll show the code again. Okay, I'll just uh, run through it again for you in case uh, needed it. But um, this is all the code that it is to make it follow the player. Um, we have a trigger device which I then subscribe to down here, which when somebody thing triggers the triggers, it does stuff. Uh, here's the do stuff function. It's a maybe agent because it's an optional because other things other than players or NPCs can trigger uh, the trigger. So the first thing we check is, is it an agent? Yes, it is. Uh, we're going to get the fork character. Then we're going to get the entity that relates to the fork character. We're going to get the simulation entity. Um, which is just the main thing that you can attach things to in the world. And then we're going to get the origin of the fork character. Um, and then we say we define our prefab that we're going to add to the world. 
we're going to add that prefab to the world and then we're going to set its origin to the fork character now if you wanted to um so what i did was i lifted it up above the head but if you wanted to you could uh, you could change the rotation or you could do lots of other things now you've got access to the uh, local transfer you can scale it you can you can have full control over this really um, and that is it it's it's that simple so um i'll try and full screen it so you can see all the code there you go um, and that is it guys enjoy <laughs>